I started my solo band after uh, Mike Joyce and Andy Rock. You know, it kind of didn't work out. I wanted to go and uh, keep moving, you know, musically. It wasn't enough for me. Um, you know, that conventional kind of, like, you know, I do that thing. I always taking the mic out of myself when it comes to that. But it is literally, the music kind of made me feel like, yeah, mate, you know, I'm, you know, <laughs> trotting around on your toes and looking at your feet and when you're playing. <laughs> I want to move forward with music. I, I never grew up. You know, I wasn't a, an indie kid. I, like I said, I grew up with dance music, really. And so I formed a group with this chap here. He's an Indian tabla player called Dalbir Singh Rapper. And then all of a sudden ran into British Council. And they're sending me to, this is Libya, believe you or not. This is near uh, Benghazi. And um, this is a, a, a Roman city. It's about three miles across. I don't believe it. It was a complete city. It's even bigger than, like, Rome's, you know, glory and all that. It's a complete city. You could spend all day walking across the things, three miles um, across. And um, we just had pictures taken. We had a military escort, took us around and showed us about places and things. Um, this is my current project. Uh, that's Mike Joyce again, what he looks like now, what I look like now. Well, on my 50th birthday, actually, that picture. But So the two of us um, just doing, I've got a project called Asmic, where we're using, um, we're using Ableton. His drums are um, working with, you know, he's using the rack off uh, Ableton, but he's also, um, well, to tell you the truth, this might be an opening for somebody. <laughs> because what we're doing, I spoke to Mike about this, we're looking for a VJ. And we're looking for a DJ VJ. We're looking for somebody who can, we're not, we don't want a bass player, we don't want a guitarist, we don't want a keyboard player. We want somebody who's good with filters, envelopes, and faders, sliders, and video can scratch some video as well. Has got something to say. That's uh, so there's a space here <laughs> waiting for uh, somebody who's ambitious, wants to tour with us next year for festivals, to fit into that slot where two, you know, uh, grumpy old guys don't want to do the shit they were doing in the 80s or 90s or whatever it is. We want to move forward and play fresh music. I mean, as you saw, the way that the first song I played you, it wasn't a conventional song per se. It had structure, but. I wouldn't have said that you would have recognised what scale was that, what, where was where was he playing the notes, or how I was playing it. So that's where I'm going. That's my current project, uh, Asmic with Mike Joyce. Um, just a few little highlights. That's the sea of people. <laughs> 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 right? That's me smiling. <laughs> uh, my girl at the time is kind of going, hey, look at me. <laughs> you know, that kind of, uh, I'm on my dad. <laughs> This is Glastonbury, uh, Pyramid Stage, looking out at that sea. That's Ian in the corner there, half cut off there. Um, this is my current band, so I've got this in, he's hidden behind the speaker, but he plays the tablas. I'm on this setup, um, it's a cut down version, but um, we're actually supporting Marillion there. <laughs> Marillion, the prog rock group, Marillion. So you can see about defying genre, about being able to just fit into something just because music is music i don't care you know well i mean there is a certain thing you know i might say no to some things so this is what we look well it's a shame i can't really picture so dark i play this instrument in the middle called a sarod but it's a, an indian instrument called sarod it's not sitar it has the same grouping of strings but it's called sarod and it's played um slide slide with a fingernail and I'm teaching myself off YouTube how to play it. <laughs> and the guys who play this thing, you know, they're masters. They've been playing it for 80 years and they're like not masters yet. They don't consider themselves. And here's me, a kid from Longsight, got it off, playing it off YouTube, going, mm, I got a tune out of it. Okay. So, uh, but that's what we look like. That's my current band. Because less is more and it allows the music to breathe and gives me space to think of ideas and what I can do. Um, like I said, the silly things I do. Um, keep myself interested. That's a, a, a Marshall speaker cabinet, 4x12, with a fridge in it. <laughs> <laughs> with rope lighting around it. <laughs> so there's three cabinets. You can see the three cabinets. And that's the middle cabinet on stage. I used to open it up and throw drinks out to the audience. And you see them sweating at the front and throw a few bottles of water. And, or throw a few drinks to the band, you know, out of the, out of my, the Marshall mini bar. And Noel went and copied me and got himself on an Oasis. So there's a better picture. So that was my setup at the time, Marshall Ed, that I was. Um, with my own powered mixer, because I had to monitor my own PA system on stage. 
So because obviously everything that needed a full range sound had to run if you didn't have decent in-ears or something like that. And I wasn't, at that time, the in-ears weren't great. So um, I just literally had my own PA system <laughs> on stage with a powered mixer. Um, ran the everything through a guitar synth, and that's the same again. Then I developed these things, <laughs> which are literally laser rings. <laughs> Every finger has a laser on the top of it. So I used to blind people with actually like 20 beams of lasers. And uh, the beams would go all the way to the back of a hall. About ten of them, you could draw shapes with them and you wave your hands around. <laughs> couldn't play any chords, boy. <laughs> and that was the main guitar for the Ian Brown tours, which was a, a Perspex uh, um, green guitar you could see through, and it has green lights in it. And uh, these lasers, uh, I tell you, it was just things. I was so bored. Uh, <laughs> and they're battery powered. Those things on my wrists. But I used to do a lot of work with DJs, so I'd play along with loops and stuff. And uh, well, guys, you know, just doing their thing, and I'd play, you know, uh, you know, shaft or something on top, some bit of wah wah, or make strange noises. And, uh, this guitar and those things would work great in that environment to work with, you know, um, with DJs. Um, that's what it looked like when it was. In, oh, you can't see the beams. In the dark, the lights would always show up, and the hand, the can't quite see it there, but there's beams coming off my hand where my head's shadow is there. Well, sorry about this. There's no, there's no clarity here. This is one of my first shows on tour in uh, Libya. This is in Tripoli, Tripoli University. I've got military escorts. I've got people watching me, secret services. You, oh, that's nice. That's clear, yeah. And so you've got all the, <laughs> all the front. They're all government officials. <laughs> I'm doing a song about a stripper here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song about a song called Kills Me, which is uh, about a mate of mine who goes out with a stripper, and uh, he's always bragging about her all the time. And then I used to see him at the top of the road, arguing, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Get off. And, uh, you know, going mad at her. He's, he, he was killing him. Killing him, it was. And um, so I was talking to Dal, thinking, Dal, do you think they understand what this <laughs> the words can hear? <laughs> And they are all government. And then all the students at the back, they really wanted to enjoy themselves, but the military police and all that, they keep everything under, under wraps, under manners. I joined um, a guy in 2010 on tour called Stephen Wilson, uh, Porcupine Trees. Anybody know? This is like prog rock, king of prog rock, Grammy nominated, blah, blah, blah. And he asked me, do you want to go on tour with us? It's a world tour. And at that time, I said yes, because I don't do sessions, but I thought I need to network, you know, to get my stuff, as everybody does. You need to, you go meet people, you go meet distributors and distributors and labels and all that. I thought, okay, where are you playing? He gave me a list. I went, that's everywhere I want to be. <laughs> so I said, yeah, okay, I'm going to get paid and I'll get to network and, and sell my, my wares. So I had this made, <laughs> which was my pedal board at the time, a, a complete switching system. The MIDI was limited on this because of the gig rig. It was made by Daniel Steinhardt from the gig rig. It has limited MIDI. Some items like these two white boxes, I don't know if you guys can see them, they're made by Eventide. But Eventide, as you well know, you know, they were at the beginning of MIDI and pitch shifting and flanges and whatnot. Full MIDI spec. Absolutely everything, every par parameter as you would want, assignable, um, any channel, um, multiple expression pedals, um, it has got MIDI sockets, USB, librarians, patches. I'll, I'll run through some of that if we have time. Um, but at the time, that was my pedal board with uh, the old even tides at the back. That was a drawer that actually pulled out. <laughs> there was actually three layers of pedals in there. So you've got the top layer, and then you've got the lower rung. Then the lower rung opens up, and underneath is all my distortions, old vintage fuzz boxes. And then at the back are all the digital effects. There's three, no, there's a um, Strymon timeline, two even tides, and a line six. And that drawer actually falls in. And this is all my controllers and, you know, everything, as you can see by that foot. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Uh, you can see the M audio stuff in there and as well, They're assigned to, you know, parameters, expression pedals. I love expression pedals because nothing, I, I don't really like things which are fixed. Um, which, well, let's touch on that. The, um, when you heard me play here, even at the beginning, oh, let's get rid of that, right. So there's a dry guitar sound, yeah? 
Let's tune up first, because you deserve the best. So let's tune this. Yeah, it's way out there. So I got this uh, TC electronic tuner, but you know what? With tuners in a live situation, I'm not too happy with this tuner. Uh, I tend to I'll probably go back to the Boss tuner or use something that's internal to one of these. They all have tuners. Everything has a tuner built in it these days. Um, as I'm playing the the reverb's not constant is it it's not on all the time it's coming and going as I'm controlling it with an expression pedal now uh, uh, how I can relate this is that when you're working on your session you, you're either using a um, you know an analog mixer or a digital you know a USB mixer or something or it's, in, it's integrated into your interface or whatever um, and when you're mixing effects, say you're using external effects or something like that, or even routing them in, say, internally, even if they're virtual uh, and you've got virtual tracks, you would have the actual instrument that you're playing would be coming in one channel on your desk, or two channels if it's a stereo instrument. But then effects would then normally, old school, but you can do it virtually, you would have parallel mixing. You would run the returns of the effects through channels so that you can mess around with the effects output and do whatever strange things you wish to do and write a whole series of movements and you know make them do this and jump out and, and it's but um so so what happens is that the instrument will have its sends auxes and the auxes will send to the effects and the effects will come in stereo, won't they? So you've got three channels, you've got three tracks basically, haven't you? You've got your track of the instrument or two tracks of the instrument, and then you've got parallel returns of the track, the stereo returns of the effects unit. So that stays constant, and how much you send to the effects is how much of the effects you actually hear. So on, on some great recordings, you always hear the notes bloom. That was the old school. Was a, the engineer actually was like that with the send, wasn't he? Going, oof, <laughs> turning it. It was a great solo, and Gary Moore played this. And then around the last note, he went, Way, and the reverb just went, woof, opened up, and or it echoed. And that's literally what I'm doing here. Um, this is by a company called Source Audio, an American company. They're brilliant. They make things that look like they're analog. They're digital internally. Uh, and there's actually a parallel mixer built into this unit here called the Dimension D, it's a reverb unit, beautiful reverb. Um, it's just unique um, compared to the others. It's like if I hit a note, uh, I'll get nothing, but then if I turn the volume up, <laughs> it's that kind of, you know, I can use that in terms of being able to See, I'm at my dry signal now, playing on top. And every time I want to send a bit to the reverb, so I've got two settings on there actually because it only gives you two patches. But he has a, a brain which can store hundreds of patches once you connect them all up together. But anyway, let's not get into that. So this wah wah looking thing is just my, um, this is an expression pedal and it's acting as a send on the channel, sending to the reverb, which makes it musical. As you know, you know, you don't, this day and age, who keeps things straight all the way through a track? Nobody does. It all, you know, you can't help it like, oh, should I not 
not all going to filter it and the filter is going to go like this and, you know and modulate that and uh, so in the same way as I'm playing I don't want the guitar I'm literally producing the guitar as I'm playing so that I'm not just playing a, a, a dry signal I want And I like it, especially when I want to do something, say, in a housey techno vein. Let's try something here. Right, so here we go. Let's make it noisy. Let's make it really noisy. I like it noisy. Yeah. That's what it'd sound like if it didn't have too much of effect. Well, let's drop the effects up. Sound like with a, a bit of a loop. Let's drop a loop. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the the point is, you know, as I said, where's the rules?